All right, now for my modern deck. Um, I chose Omnath Pile, which is what I'm calling it. Um, it's just good cards, counter spells, and Omnath pretty much. My the biggest innovation on my list is um, playing three Hour of Promise. I think this card's really good. A lot of lists only play like one or so, but I think it's much better than cards like Jason Mind Sculptor or Teferi or um, I mean to five mana Teferi and other late game cards like that since it's so hard to interact with and it basically kind of ensures that you're going to win late game. The problem with the Planeswalkers is that they could just be attacked down or uh, removed and then you didn't you don't really get that late game advantage uh, that hour gives you. And also it like if you're able to instant speed it off to fairy time rappler, it's really nuts. Really cool interaction there. Um, yeah, most often, I mean, a lot of the time you get two fields if you expect the game to go long, but if you need blockers immediately, you get like a field and a fetch lands, which is a, a pretty common combination. Um, I, either of which should be good enough to win uh, any late game. So this deck kind of functions as just survive until you play Hour of Promise. And I actually really think uh, Aether Gust is good in this metagame. Basically all the decks I consider tier 1 get hit by it in, uh, in some way, some more so than others, but most, most decks get hit by it to some degree. Um, and it gives you like a huge edge in the Primeval Titan matchups game 1, since it is able to counter things through uh, Cavern Assaults. And a lot of the times all you need is like a little tempo boost from Aether Gust. You don't need to like fully counter it because you could just like counter their thing during their turn and then play make like a huge Omnath hour turn or something and it's really hard for your opponent to come back from that. Um, yeah, the rest of the cards are pretty standard. For Earl, obviously. I'm only playing two force. I expect a lot of people to be playing decks like the Mirror and stuff and like Death Shadow where Force isn't that good, so this is kind of a metagame choice for the Mox. I'm um, not sure if I would just play only two Force in general, but I feel like it's a good choice for this metagame. I guess I think a lot of people are going to be playing Fair decks rather than uh, the combo decks. Honestly, my list really disrespects combo. I, I think I have a bad combo matchup, but I don't expect it to be that popular. I originally had two Soul Guide Lanterns and like one more Graveyard Hate, but I decided to put more Cyber cards for the Mirror. Another thing is... um. I only have one field to ruin main deck. A lot of lists have two field to ruin. Uh, I just I tried out two field to ruin. It just felt like a major mana too bad. You just have too many colorless lands for a four color deck. But I do think it's pretty important for the mirror to have access to two field to ruin to help deal the fields of the dead. So I have another one in my sideboard for that matchup specifically. Obviously, you bring it against decks like Tron and stuff. Um, but yeah, I think it. I think having two fields of ruin just hurts your consistency overall too much. Because uh, the, the mana is good, but it's not. It's not like perfect. It's not. It's not like how it was with Astrolabe, where you just had perfect mana every game. You still. You still have to work for your mana, so it's definitely not a free roll to just run a bunch of colorless lands in your four color deck when you're trying to cast Omnath and Cryptic. It's honestly miraculous that this deck's mana even works at all, considering. Uh, the, the, the demands from your spells in terms of uh, what colors of mana you need. Um, yeah, and the sideboard, it's classic modern sideboard, just a bunch of one ofs and stuff. Uh, I'm actually playing two Supreme Verdict over other sweepers, like a lot of play, lists play like Fire Spout and stuff, but I expect um, the green white, this new green white company counters deck to be somewhat popular. And with the counter synergies in that deck, let their creatures get really big, so Fire Spout isn't that reliable. They also play Ariok Champion, which dodges uh, Fire Spout. So I just went with the uh, No Questions Asked uh, Sweeper for that matchup. And then got Condemn and Purge for the Death Shadow matchup. Ashiok, Dispute, and Aether Gust for the Mirror. Wildfire for the land decks. It's also good against decks like a um, red green deck, red green blood moon deck, because you could actually use cleansing wildfire on yourself to uh, to break out from under a, a blood moon lock, since it costs red mana. So you could use your your mountains to uh, play it, destroy one of your own non basics, get a basic to help you cast your spells. 
pretty useful. It's also really good against Utopia Sprawl, which they play. I have Engineer Explosives just as kind of a catch-all answer. Um, in case someone tries to metagame by playing like Boggles or something, I have an answer to that. And it's also really good against Death Shadow. It's decent against the the Collected Company deck, so it's good. Soul Guide Lantern is to respect the Graveyard Combo deck, the Oops All Spells deck. Um, I was originally playing two, but then I thought about it more, and I felt like I felt like it was pretty unlikely people would play that deck, at least not in higher numbers. So I decided to skimp a little bit and only play one, which I hope is a good call. Um, two Veil Summers card just excellent. I could easily see going up to three. It's just so good, obviously. That's why it's banned in a bunch of formats. Uh, it's really good against the Thoughtseize decks, really good in the mirror, because it stops counter spells. You know how good Veil is. Um, yeah, uh, one change, I'm not sure if the Gross Spirals are necessary, but a lot of the time, if you're not going to be doing anything else on turn two, so it's just a nice, uh, nice way to ramp into the hour. Um, it just it just helps smooth out your deck. It's, it can't be too wrong to play Gross Spiral. Yeah, the counter suite feels kind of random, but I've liked it. Cryptic is obviously very important for the deck since you have Mystic Sanctuary and stuff. So that's why there's three of those, but two Mana Leak is kind of a catch-all. Two Aether Gust, since, like I said, I thought it's really good in this meta. Two Force, because I kind of feel like you need to play it, even though I don't think it's great in the current meta game. But, you know, I think it's too disrespectful to play Zero Force. Plus, it's it's serviceable in the mirror. It's not great most of the time, but you need to, you need to play it. Uh, the way I basically sideboard in a lot of matchups, the thing about modern is that it's, you kind of, people play like different tech cards and stuff, so you kind of have to sideboard differently depending on what exactly your opponent's doing. Um, but like in the mirror, I would board out bolts, a bunch of paths, um, and, uh, yeah, I actually kind of like trimming a couple Omnaths because it gets hit by Dispute. And it's sorcery speed, which isn't great. And then you board in um, V7. I, I don't like Wildfire much in the mirror. Uh, having to tap out during your own turn to play it isn't optimal. And most of the time, you're just going to be cycling it. Then against like Death Shadow, you could trim on Forces, trim on Mana Leaks. Aether Gust is, isn't great against them, but sometimes they have Blood Moon, in which case Aether Gust is good. Um, and you board in like your removal, and it's obviously like most of the sideboards pretty self-explanatory. Board in Veil against Death Shadow too. Like those are the two decks I expect the most. So those are the decks I was most concerned about. Um, like honestly, modern. When I was testing modern and leagues and stuff, you just play against so much random stuff. That's kind of hard to tell what the meta game is. But those are the two decks I was expecting most. There's obviously a ton of other decks, but I, I feel like most of the sideboards pretty self-explanatory. Board out Aether Gust if it's not good against them. Board out Bolt if they're like a control deck. Board out Path if they're not a creature based deck. Um, you could you board out Hour against really fast decks and combo decks because most of the time um, the games don't come down to that. Yeah, uh, I, I feel much better about. I think this deck's really good. I feel much better about this deck uh, than the Pioneer one. So definitely looking forward to playing some Modern. The hardest part about this deck is uh, sequencing your lands most of the time. It's pretty tricky, but um, you get the hang of it pretty quickly. A lot of times, just you just get you fetch land for Triumph, and then then you get like whatever your missing color is with the second fetch lands. Basically, always want to be don't, going turn one Triumph, which is why you don't really play any one drops in this deck. Triumphs just make your mana so much smoother. Yeah, that's 